This is a good look at the ball drills that I like to warm up with every single day. I simply call them just the run at me ball drills. And what it is is they're going to run right at me, the coach, and I'm going to throw them the ball above their chest where they can frame it and shoot the diamond, throw the ball below their chest where they need to scoop down and go get it, forming a basket with their hands. And then you can see here catching the ball at an angle. Uh, what I'm looking for in each one of these reps is that they're not drifting, they're not slowing down, they're attacking the ball in the air. And then, of course, they have hot, proper hand placement and proper mechanics. So this is kind of our, our pre-practice warm-up that we do every day. Just one line running at me, and I'm going to throw the ball in different spots. The key for the receiver is to not lose any speed. I want you to run through the ball, and I want you to shoot the diamond with your elbows in tight. When our elbows are pointed to the side, they're more likely to separate up, upon contact with the ball. So we want to shoot the diamond with our elbows tight, aggressive hands, and the key is just to not lose any speed. We want to attack the football even when we're on the move. Ball above your chest, you're going to shoot the diamond. Ball below your chest, you're going to shoot the, the basket, like you can see here with the low ball drills. Still attach your eyes to it no matter what. Really aggressive eyes, aggressive hands. Don't lose any speed. Now we're going to angle ourselves to the side. And this is the exact drill we're doing stationary. Now we're just adding, you know, obviously, the running component to it. But same coaching points where you want to keep the ball out front. Keep the ball in front of your eyes. You know, the, Whenever you let the ball drift past your eyes, that's when you're more likely for drops. And this goes with kind of your, your angle on your run right here as well. I want you to attack the ball aggressively. Don't drift or fade away from the ball. Go attack it and go meet the ball. This isn't bad right here, staying on that line, attacking it, but now you can see Ruhan kind of drifting backwards instead of attacking the ball aggressively. Same thing here, drifting backwards. We want to attack it just like this. Leante's doing right there. Attack the ball, go meet it. This is my favorite running ball drill. This is called the pullback drill. Practicing the art of combat catches and competing for those 50-50 balls. What you want to do is, is jump up and attack the ball. That one was throwing a little hot for them. him there. He's got to go get it. You want to rip the ball out of the air aggressively and torque your body in midair so that you give the defender your back. But you want to go high point the football, attack the ball, and then torque your body in midair so that you give the defender your back just like that. And he has to play through your body to get to the football. It's a simple movement, but it's the key to finishing these 50-50 balls and coming down with more. Yes, sir. That's a great example right there. Just obey the ball, give the defender your back. On this one here, you see Juwan doesn't obey the ball, and that ball was thrown kind of back shoulders. So he wants to go with the ball and take the shortest path to giving the defender his back, and he wants to torque his body the other way. And what he doesn't want to do is rip the body through the defender like this, where the defender will have a chance to punch the ball out. He wants to get the ball tucked and give the defender his back as soon as possible. Hey, so we're running vertical. You got We're working on different press release plans versus press. I don't love that there from, from Juwan kind of hopping, but, but like I told them, the best opportunity to win on a vertical route versus press coverage is at the line of scrimmage. There's not another break point to win at. There's not another move to make. you got to win at the line. And, and when I met Devonta Adams, one thing that he told me that a coach had always told him is that press releases at the line of scrimmage on a go ball, it's like wiping your own ass. You know, when was the last time you were on the toilet and you rushed, you know, wiping before you were done? It's the same kind of concept. You can't rush it. You got to take your time with it. You got to do it right every single time and execute your plan. And then you can go on with your day or, or go on with the route. I'm attacking outside short. I'm trying to get outside of him right away. I see maybe one to two yards outside of him. So if I run out here, now I've captured his leverage. He has to jump outside to cut me off. If he does, he's off balance. I can win inside easily. Okay, or... If I get outside of right away, and I'm here, now I've won. Now I've got to double up inside the freeze and then you went outside. Okay, so I want that, that scenario, all outside leverage. You want to attack that outside short arm first, try to get outside of him right away. He gives you the outside, freeze him back inside the whole thing in vertical. He jumps outside the catch ball, and you can put the ground and win inside. Talking about the, the importance of attacking short arm, 
you don't want to aim right up the middle of a DB. If he's outside leverage, you want to aim one to two yards outside of him and force him to either jump outside aggressively to cut you off, and then you can win back inside, or he sits inside, you've captured outside leverage, and you can win outside. What attacking short arm does is it forces the DB to make a decision right away. He can't just stay there and, and stay in the middle of you and kind of play both ways. He has to declare his technique right away. Is he going to jump outside to cut you off? Well, then you can be decisive. Is he going to sit inside and give you the outside? Well, then you can be decisive and win outside. But the key is that initial aiming point, which is what I call the short arm, attacking short arm, and making sure that you're getting the DB to move his feet first. It's a good job by Juju. Get outside right away. The DB hesitates at all. You give him two quicks back in, and then you, you win with speed outside. A little false step there by Juwan, but I like his aiming point. Making progress. And now, if the DB gives you space, if he press bails, you want to eat up space right away, chase the near hip. No more dancing at the line of scrimmage. Just get running and eat up space immediately. And it takes time. Some of these guys start to think a little bit too much. They stop being athletes, but they need to understand the concepts of what they're trying to execute. That's a good job playing low to lower there by Juju. Good, good job executing. All right, now here's a basic cone drill I like to do to kind of slow everything down and work on the real detailed mechanics of each break point. I uh, throw them two tennis balls to start and then a football. I love tennis balls because it forces them to, to focus their eyes on a smaller target. And then you catch the football, catch and pierce. So a real good example by Christian Dremel, who will be a freshman next year at Rutgers. I coached him this year at Don Bosco Prep. Really good feet, efficient in the break area, and that's what we're working on, just efficiency in the break area. Not running at 100%, not going as fast as we possibly need to, but we're just working on slowing it down. There's a, little too, a few too many steps at the top right there for, for Juwan. Doing this with the hip shift, you're going drop break, and then you're giving the hip shift. Right? On the drop step, just push off your instep. So you're here, drop break, pop. Just again, just, just harping on efficiency, teaching them how to use a hip shift as part of their break point so they can shake guys at the top of the routes. But just all about being efficient. Stay square. You don't want to turn your shoulders early. Stay square. That's efficient and violent right there by Juju. Just got to get his head and eyes around and catch the rock. This is it right here. Now, the thing Dremel has a bad habit of is stepping underneath himself a little bit, but his feet are efficient. He's smoothing it out. Got to finish with a catch. That's it right there. Watch the efficiency and the power changing directions. Juju does a great job of changing directions violently and being very efficient with his feet for a guy who's 6'4", 6'5". That's it right there. Drop in the direction you want to go, and then you can drop break line. This was early on in the offseason process with Jawan. He's, he's really fixed a lot of these things. I give him a lot of credit. We've done a lot of work on this. Um, but, you know, he had some bad habits of just being inefficient in his break points, and it's something we worked through over the last two or three months. And like I said, credit to him. He's really done a great job getting better and becoming more efficient. This is a great example of efficiency here by Juju. Drop break line. It's just drop break line. That's it. That's the most efficient way to get in and out. Here's Dremel. Drop break line. Drop break line. Drop break line. It's efficient, it's clean, it's quick, it's sudden. Talking about running a hitch here, drop pop on your second inside step. And same conversation we were just having. You want to drop your weight in the direction you want to go. So on a hitch, you're going to turn inside. So push vertical for two revolutions. That means you're, you're dropping on your second inside step. All right, when guys who teach the snap down, you can see Juwan has this habit. He's dropping on his outside. He's going drop and then one, two, gather. In my opinion, that's slightly less efficient than what Juju just did, which is push vertical and drop on your inside step. See Juwan's dropping on his outside, one, two, gather. Now watch Juju. He's going to push vertical another half yard more depth, drop pop. And he's going to get in and out just a little bit more suddenly, and he's going to get a little bit more depth. Everything's a fade until it's not. That's the key on a hitch row. Sell fade, low pad level, make the DB think you're pushing vertical, and then snap down violently. But again, snap down on your inside foot in the direction you want to go. Still drop it on his outside. He'll work through it eventually, and we've gotten a lot better with it. Again, what it does by dropping on your inside is watch Juju get another half yard of depth. I don't need him running back to the quarterback like that. It's another thing we've fixed. All right, now we're talking about a stop route, which is drop pop on your third inside step. You're pushing to nine yards now. This is what we love to run versus press coverage. 
trying to take like a lazy release at the line of scrimmage. You don't want to kill him at the line. You just want him running with you on your inside hip. You're going to sell vertical, then you're going to drop pop suddenly on your third inside step and throw him by at the top. Everything's a fade until it's not. You're selling vertical, selling vertical, then it's a clean, efficient drop pop break point. Should be able to get in and out and, and beat any DB on this if you sell fade. You know where you're going and the DB doesn't, so you always have the advantage. You maintain control by having a good plan and being sudden in, your, in the break area. You, you want to close the space, get right on my inside hip. It's a great job. You see how Jawan right there attacked me? He felt that space in the beginning of the route, and then he stuck his foot in the ground and stemmed right at me because you want to be right on the DB's hip at the top of this. Right, so listen, two quick coaching points on this. We want to take like a shitty release, okay? Because we want him running with us, so we don't want to kill him at the line of scrimmage. The last thing I want to do is cross him over and leave him all the way here. We're not going to stop. Now he's in the throwing lane. All right, so it's a shitty release. If I'm here and now there's space, if there's space right here, I want to close that space and lead into him. Because the last thing you want at the beginning of the round is space between you and the DB that just makes it comfortable for him. Yeah, so if Christian go again, go take your two quicks. So if I do this, there's space you want to lead into me. And that makes it make me push vertical, and it makes it easier for the throw box. Alright? Now lean into me, lean into me, throw by. That's a great job by Christian. Good job there by Juju as well. Now attack the ball in the air, circle back. That's a, that's a hell of a rep right there. Have a good plan, just two quicks to get him running. You push vertical, push vertical, and lean into him. Get the DB to turn his shoulders to the sideline, and then drop pop. Now versus loose coverage is just like a hitch. Sell vertical, sell vertical, everything's a fade till it's not. Your whole body language needs to scream vertical, and then you shut it down suddenly. Third inside drop pop on a stop route, which gets you to nine yards. Hey, Drew, that's good. Hey, so the last one, you out. If it's loose coverage now, what you can do to kind of, you want to put the DB in O-shoe mode, make it think it's fade. So on your second inside, come on here. One, give a pressure step. Boom. And then drop pop and settle it down. That's how we just giving them some different tools to win versus loose man coverage on this. A pressure step at the top on your second inside step, just like you would do if you were gonna shave his shoulder and run vertical. That's a really good way to put the DB in what I call oh shit mode, get him chasing, get him off balance, and you can shut it down suddenly. Pressure step, pop up. Yep, that's it right there. That's a great job by Juwan. Good job by Christian. He can be a little bit more efficient at the top, but everything he's doing is sudden. Really good pressure step to sell vertical and then shut, down, shut it down suddenly. Now run a hitches on the other side. Again, everything's a fade till it's not. Second inside drop pop. Sell vertical, low pad level, sudden break point. Good job keeping low pads right there by Jawan. Just hold his ground, keep his feet hot at the top. You don't need to run back to the ball. Christian's been doing this for forever, so he's, he's got a, a pretty natural feel for it. Juju can open his stride up more there. Doesn't want to shorten his stride. Just run through the break point. Sell vertical, open your stride up. Jawan can do the same thing. Open your stride, sell vertical, and trust your feet. That's a good job by Dremel. Great effort going down to get the ball. Open your stride, get running vertical, and trust that the drop pop will get you in and out. That's a better job there by Jawan. You see he's getting a lot more depth. A little false step there in his, in his stance and start. We've fixed that now, thank goodness. Good job by Juju there. That's a sound rep. Another false step. Good job, low pad level. Now he's dropping on his inside. That was a lot better. And again, this was the early stages of the offseason process. This was around Christmas time, right after Juwan's bowl game, right after Juju's last game. So we, we've come a long way since then. Just want to kind of document the process for you guys so you can see the progression over, over the coming weeks. You can see I'm kind of getting on him on the stance and start now. He's getting a little discouraged because he just can't get his body to drop on his inside step. Just got to break years of bad habits. We'll get there. Juju's got to trust his feet more. They're all just thinking a lot, and that's what happens on the first few days of this. Good job again, attack and leverage right there. But a lot of these guys will be thinking too much on the first few days. They get comfortable, they get the reps, it becomes second nature, and then they start to rock. 
not going 100 miles an hour here, slowing it down, get the details right. Good hand combat there by Juju, and attack the ball. Third inside, drop pop. One, two, drop pop. Good little stem right there outside to sell vertical. Shut it down suddenly, I love it. Push vertical, stem, drop pop. Yes, sir. When Juwan doesn't think he's a very natural route runner, very natural athlete, I want to refine the technique so it becomes second nature. But when he just lets it loose and lets his athleticism show, he's a, he's a heck of a player. So this is a release draw I like to do. I set up cones at different depths, and the player's got to work on different plans to attack the DB. So the cone is, is the short arm you want to aim at. So this is inside leverage, tight press coverage. You want to aim inside, you're going to use two quicks. So the first rep is two quicks, then the cones are a little bit more spaced out. You can see a false step there by Jawan. Good job on your insteps. You saw that he was on his insteps. The second one is two full steps. Another false step there by Jawan, but now you're really opening your stride and diving inside. Now it's an outside leverage stretch release. Get outside. Two quick steps to, to hold them and then win back outside. Here's a look at Juju going through it. Dive inside. Four quicks. One, two, three, four. Good change of rhythm. Now get outside right away. You win outside. Give him two quicks to hold them and then get vertical. I'll, I'll, I'll explain this to him right now. Fall step is a real big issue with Juwan. It makes me sick looking at it now. I'm so glad we've gotten it fixed. Much better. Much better. The ball's inside of their left now this time around. Switch your feet, dive inside, get the defender to run inside, and then win back outside. I love this release. Dremel works on the four quicks. Juwan was working on the two full steps. Here's Juju going through it. Two quicks. One, two. Eat up space vertical. Everything is rolling off that front foot, attacking the DB vertical. Now four quicks. One, two, three, four. Good job. Good job. Feet are staggered, low pad level, in a, in a good, powerful position. Now here's a second round through. They can kind of have gotten used to the movements. Now they can perfect it. One, two, good. Push vertical, attack vertical. Nothing is dancing at the line of scrimmage. You want to gain ground. Good job keeping his feet staggered there by Dremel. That was Juwan using four quicks. One, two, three, four. Feet staggered so that next step can be vertical when you decide to cut off the release. Really good job there by Luke. Feet staggered, attack inside short arm. Good rhythm. Getting used to it there by John. He'll get a lot better as the days go on. One, two, three, four. Good job. Again, they're not going 100 miles an hour. They're getting used to the footwork. They just got to accumulate reps so it becomes second nature. Some of this is unfamiliar. Some of it's a little too unnatural right now. We just want them to be athletes, but, but we got to get the reps in so that it, it can become second nature and they're not thinking about it. Like I just said, the reason why when we get outside leverage on the corner, we got to give them two quicks inside is we don't want the corner to just take all his momentum and run us into the sideline. We just want to freeze him there so we have room to win outside. Now balls into your left again. Two quicks. One, two. Feet staggered, gain ground, low to lower. Hey, Christian, hold up. Wait there. Come on, go. Yeah, I wanted to let Juwan see Christian do it because Christian's had so many reps at doing it the right way. One, two. Much better job. Eating, vert eating up space vertically. That's going to put the DB on his heels. Four quicks now. One, two, three, four. And, the, and you can switch these quicks up with different rhythm. Use the first two quicks as read steps, assess the DB's reaction, and then two more quicks to get on his toes and be sudden, and then you break. Switch up the rhythm, have some creativity to it. Not bad by Juwan. He took two extra steps, but it, it, four to six quicks is not really that big of a deal. It, what really matters is that you're eating up space, you're getting on the DB's toes, and you're sudden when you break. One, two, three, four. Again, kind of like baby deer legs, learn how to walk, learn how to, how to operate in a different way. It'll come in time. Juwan, or Juju moved with his front foot first there. You never want to do that. You never want to widen your base that much. Move your back foot first. If you move your top foot first, you're like this. That sucks. You know? So you always got to move your back foot first. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. You know? On your insteps. One, two, three, four. Change up the rhythm. On your insteps. Feet staggered. One, two, three, four. 
Yes, sir. And he's getting inside the cone. He's attacking inside short arm. Get the DB to shoot his hands or lunge inside. And then you can win back outside. That's all we've got is to look at the very beginning stages of the WRU offseason and these NFL training sessions with Juwan Winfrey and Juju Wingate. Also featured is Christian Dremel, who will be an incoming freshman at Rutgers next year. Really excited to show you guys the progress that these players have made, all the hard work they've put in, and some of the new drills that we kind of stack on top of each other to help develop the kids' games. See you next time. Everybody.